Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, it's the second week of October, and it's always National Marine Week. We love it. Um, and marine welfare, obviously, is something that we should all be thinking a lot more about and taking greater care in regard to. So we also chat about penguins at the moment as we acknowledge African Penguin Awareness Day. That was last week. And to give us some of their insights into these topics, we've invited representatives from both the Two Oceans Aquarium and Sandcob to discuss the work that they are doing every day in the preservation of, I think, one of our most precious resources, certainly here in Cape Town, our marine life. So welcome, Nikki Stander, to my left from Sandcob, and regular contributor, <laughs> Renee Levena, and two penguins, an African penguin, I'm guessing, that doesn't have a name. Does it have a no, name? No, not yet. Not but yet. Keep, a, keep a close Ooh. eye on things that are, will be happening in the next couple of months. I yes. love that. So watch this space. Guys, thank you so much for joining us <laughs> on, on a very us. important yes. time, a busy time, I'm sure, for you. But yes. all year round, you are focused on these matters. Absolutely. Um, but lovely to have an opportunity to really spread the word out there. Um, I'm going to start with what we can do as, as consumers. I mean, we look at fishing lists and, and what's green and what's orange and um, being responsible um, consumers, if you will. Um, why is it so important for us, and maybe Renee, I can start with you there, to, to look at what we eat and why is that such an important part of the puzzle? I guess so. Um when you talk about lists, you're obviously talking about the SASI list, the Southern African Sustainable Seafood Initiative. And they work on a robot system. So you have a, a green list, an orange list, and a red list. The green list is the list that tells you that the, the animals and the fish on that list is environmentally OK to eat. The orange is, please think twice. If you don't have to eat it, don't eat it. <laughs> Unless you're starving. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the red list is actually no sale. So um, some people have permits for red listed species, but you're not allowed to sell that. So if you see something like on, that's on the red list and you're going to a restaurant and you see it and they're actually not allowed to sell it. So that, that's the robot system. And why it's important that we look at this, this list and stick with what we eat from, uh, uh, on the green list is because it has an impact on what our marine life is coming to at the moment, and it's not great. On the screen, we have various species. The, um, that's a uh, copperstium brass, and it's on the red list. Look how sad he is. You can <laughs> see how sad he is at being on, the, on the red list. Um, we'd love to take your calls as well, 021-430-9881. I think what we often miss when we're eating these beautifully prepared fish in restaurants is that they make part, um, a part of a very delicate mm. food chain. And maybe that's something that you can weigh on. on this. Um, th these are vital resources that penguins, in particular species, need in the ocean. How, how desperate is the, the situation in the wild? It's actually so worrying. So uh, African penguins feed primarily on pilchards or sardines, as some people call yeah. them. Uh, they also eat anchovy. And what's really sort of concerning us at the moment is that the list that Rene is talking about, the sassy list, sardine has been on the green list for, for years and it's always been regarded as sustainable. Plenty of sardine. Everyone knows about the sardine run that goes up the East Coast. Yeah. Um, and it's recently been reclassified and has been added to the orange list which means that there's less food for penguins, which means that they are at even more risk of becoming extinct in the wild. Give us an update on the situation of the African penguin. How, mm. how has that impacted their ecosystem and, and their numbers? Because you obviously get to see that. Sure. So if we go back to the 1900s, there was over a million breeding pairs of African penguins in the wild. There was, there was lots of them. And um, there's lots of uh, threats that's facing them, but one of the major threats is food shortage. And um, of course, they're competing with commercial fisheries, which use um, purse-seam fishing nets, and they take a huge quota. And over the years, that, that quota has been reduced because obviously we've known for some time that fish is a problem. Um, but certainly, the penguins have to swim further afield to try and find th their food source, and they're not finding enough. So we're seeing risk we're seeing that the penguins are, are not finding enough food. They're not finding enough food to feed themselves and their chicks. So the chicks are dying and the population is, is really struggling. So we're down to about uh, 23,000 breeding pairs left in the wild and they are an endangered wow, species. Wow, from a million yeah, down to 20,000. Really um, we're going to get into some of the, the mating habits. I know they have an incredible kind of lifestyle, if you will, <laughs> um, and, and get into more of what we can do as being yeah. responsible um, consumers. We'd love to hear from you as well, 021-430-9881. Um, that is the number to dial. We'll discuss more around Marine Week. In fact, right now we're going to explore a little bit more into how we can, as consumers, be um, better shoppers and look at what it really entails in, in terms of responsible fishing. It's my feel -good 
So again, we are inviting you to call us with your eco or wildlife related questions, or maybe to tell us a bit about your experiences traveling with animals um, and experiencing, in fact, the marine life. That's our focus um, as it is Marine Awareness Week. The number to dial 021-439-881, or you can post those questions on Facebook or Twitter. We're joined by Nikki and Renee, um, offering us a very unique perspective, in particular on penguins. It is, of course, um, or at least was, African Penguin Awareness Day. You have just shocked me with the massive decline in the numbers of African penguins, which says to me that <coughs> Sankob's role is changing. It's not necessarily just about rehabilitating maybe those animals that have been affected or birds affected by oil spills, which is terrible and has mm. huge emotional attachment, but more about what you can do to impact the numbers of penguins in the wild. What, what, how has your work changed? You know, Sankob uh, was established in 1968, and um, sure. we're renowned for our oil spill response work, um, most notably the MV Treasure that sank in year 2000. Mm. Massive it was like the, the, the biggest oil spill affecting seabirds um, to date. So uh, that's what we're known for. Um, our, but our work has changed. So thank goodness there's less oil spills today. We still have we still have a lot of um, spills happening, particularly in the Eastern Cape, because we have two centres also in in the Eastern Cape region. Uh, but um, these days we actually work with government authorities like Sand Parks and Cape Nature. Um, and when the African penguins go into molt every year they actually abandon the chicks that are left there. So when they go into molt, they actually are not waterproof anymore and they can't go into the ocean to hunt for food. So whatever's left in the nest, unfortunately they have to leave and, and those chicks would perish. Sand parks and Cape Nature go into the colony and it's actually a conservation intervention where they take those chicks out and bring them to Sankob where we hand rear them. Um, it's almost like a nature's knee-jerk reaction to the decline it in numbers. It is, and it's That's quite con yeah. controversial because there's lots of people who would argue that we should leave nature alone, but um, considering the <laughs> rapid decline of the species, we have to intervene. And those chicks are brought to Sankob, and um, they actually do very well. And independent research has shown that uh, hand-reared chicks do just as well as, as naturally reared chicks in the wild. Well, I know so. all conservation exists in a grey area at the moment, and that's sure. I think is part of the battle. And we and we know that awareness weeks um, they they are hugely important. I'd like to know from you, Renee, how, how much of an effect do they actually have? For instance, if we look at waste in the ocean, now you've changed my mindset on waste. I cut all the loops now in other people's <laughs> dustbins. I, you know, you really have um, broadcast that message. Are we having an effect? Are you seeing a shift? Well, you're a great example of having an effect. So there is a shift. Um, it's a slow, slow shift. It starts with one person. So uh, every single person that we can teach something uh, about the ocean or teach them how to look after the marine life, teach them how to not uh, affect the marine life through litter and plastic and things like that, every single person makes a difference. Because you're cutting loops. Somebody's seen you cut those yeah. loops. That person mm. hopefully will go on and cut loops somebody will see that person. So it's that um, knock-on effect. And uh, the, sh the shift, I believe there is a shift. I don't think the shift is fast enough. Yeah. So the more people that can join us in the shift, please join us in the shift. And uh, yeah, and we're seeing it uh, in our numbers at beach cleanups. Beach cleanups are growing and people are joining in. I see Every time I go to the shop and I see somebody take out their reusable bag, yeah. I am that a strange person that knocks you, <laughs> taps you on the shoulder, says, "Thank you for using yeah. the reusable yes, bag." Yes, it's, okay. <laughs> it's, it's great. So yeah, we are seeing some changes. Also seeing the changes in legislation coming through. Just this last week, there was a, quite a big announcement from the DA talking about plastic bags. So it's happening on the highest level as well. Yes. We're going to continue this discussion. We, again, we'd love to hear from you. 021-430-9881 or drop us a question or even a comment on Facebook or Twitter. We're going to take a very quick ad break. We'll see you now. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. The second week of October is always National Marine Week, and we love getting into um, our Into the Wild segment by um, obviously joining the plight of the African Penguin. It was um, a P African Penguin Awareness Day as well, so we are loving having um, our two experts, Nikki Stunner and Renee Levin, here um, from Sandcob, and of course um, from Two Oceans. We love having you here every time you come. Mm -hmm. um, you've brought a beautiful African Penguin there who doesn't have a name mm -hmm. yet. Watch the space, that's all I'm saying. Um, but they've got a, a, a beautiful uh, kind of their own lifestyle seems to be very human in many ways. Maybe, Nikki, you can open us a, a window into how they make, do they make for life? I've heard that that they is do. a reality. They do, they're one of the seabird species that um, find a partner 
So they become uh, sexually mature when they're about four years old, and um, they find a partner and uh, they will mate um, at, at the breeding site, um, and then they'll go off and, and find fish, and then when it comes around to breeding time again, they'll actually call and find that individual which is pretty romantic, if you ask me, um, that they can actually find that, that individual amongst like hundreds or thousands of, of other African penguins that look exactly the same to you and I, but they can find that individual and, and mate year after year. How, how do they do that? What is, what is what genetic trick do they have? I mean, is they have this, this innate um, desire to, to reproduce. And, um, and if they find a mate that they can have successful clutches with year after year, then they'll stick to that. If, however, they, they mate with an individual and uh, the clutch fails, so the eggs don't hatch, they can divorce. They can divorce. <laughs> Such is life. Such is Such life is, is life, exactly Nikki. like I say. It really does happen. Yes. Um, I think, Nikki, you, you, I mean, Renee, you have the opportunity to, to get a much broader perspective on on marine life and we've seen yeah. uh, as Nikki has said a massive decline in the numbers of, of African penguins what other kind of areas are you most alarmed of when we look at the bigger picture why is marine week so important what what species do we need to focus on so at the two oceans aquarium we focus on two things that's marine related that's overfishing and plastic pollution yeah. so those are the, our two big things our, uh, I've introduced you to Bob a couple of times yeah. Bob our turtle that not our Bob the dog not Bob the yeah. dog though they do look quite a lot <laughs> they've got a similar demeanor, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bob the turtle with his plastic that he he kind of left us one morning um, after he's started moving and the balloons and things that came out of him then we also look at the the small how small loggerheads are coming in more and more with plastic in them and the reason for that is that uh, little hatchling loggerheads they drift us they drift with the ocean currents and they eat everything that's around them and there are so many pieces of microplastics in the ocean and they eat that thinking it's food so uh, we have um, Sankop is a very good story about Bobby the the comoran that, uh, that he had a, a straw, straw twice yeah, so they mm. ate a straw and yeah. um, so straws are bad news people if, if there's something that you can take home today just just don't ditch the straws. Don't yeah. They are the very straw. dangerous to, uh, to see life. We're going to continue to look at a, a few more ways that we can get behind what you guys are doing sure. at this moment, especially. Yeah. And again, we'd love to hear from you if you've got any calls or comments. 021 9881 But right now, we're going to continue to look at the journey from a consumer's perspective of how we can make sure that we are fishing responsibly. It's my feel good so we're going to conclude our discussion about National Marine Awareness Week. We've got Nikki Stunder uh, from Sandcarb and Renee Levener from Two Oceans Aquarium. I've learned so much from you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to use this final uh, platform to put out there what you guys need from us. From a Sandcarb perspective, where can we help? I've already adopted a penguin, which is Great. such a cool process to go through awesome. and so easy to do as well. Yes. Um, what do you need from the public? Okay, so anyone who wants to help, and I urge you to because these penguins are extraordinarily special and we need to save them, uh, can go to our website, sankop.co.za, and um, get involved in lots of different ways. Uh, but one of the things they can do is adopt a penguin, like you just mentioned. Um, and for that, for 500 rand, you can um, not take a penguin home, but you can I was going to say, you don't get to keep it, unfortunately. <laughs> I did ask. No, uh. sorry. But uh, you get a certificate and you can name that penguin. So it makes a really special gift for someone special. And then you can also contribute to, to the conservation of the species as well. And that money obviously goes towards the rehabilitation and release of these birds. Um, other ways you can help is to donate a brick. So for 50 rand, you can uh, buy a brick or donate a brick uh, for our new Seabird Center in Table View. Um, the current building that we have is just can't handle. It's, yeah. a, it's a disaster. It's really uh, dilapidated, and so we, we're in the process of building a new seabird centre. We had lot of funding, however, that's not enough money to to finish the build. We want it build. to be state of the art. So, so. we want we need we need to fundraise for that. So um, those are the ways you can help. And of course, if you want to donate in any other way to our, to our other projects, then just, uh, it's just all on get the website. On board. Yes. Renee, um, I know you're championing so many initiatives at the moment. How can we help now? What do you need? 
So uh, if you go to our website you, and you go to the little shop icon, there's a donate button there as well. That money we funnel into various areas, including Sankop. We, uh, uh, Sankop, our turtle rehab, our Cataloup Save Alive for the seal rehabs and things like that. So uh, that's one way. Another way is just to make a change in your own life. Yeah. To today decide, I'm not buying shopping bags anymore. Mm. I'm not using straws. If you need a straw, get yeah, yourself a bamboo, bamboo yeah. straw, a stainless steel or a glass straw. They're out there and you can get them um, all over the place. Uh, go to our website, check out our campaigns and just make that one decision today to change something in your life. And of course, buy sassy green listed uh, seafood not and, and yellow, fish. Not orange, not red. Not, not orange, nothing. not red. Green. And if you, yeah, and um, and that's sardines. You know, sardines. It, and so here's a thing: buy chicken that hasn't been fed on fish meal, because sardines make fish meal. I think what we often forget is as consumers we are probably the, the most powerful voice in that because yeah. we affect the commercial chain and sure. how companies then produce and if you start buying bamboo, if you stop buying plastic products, they're going to yes. be forced to think of other ways of making money. Ladies, thank you so much for what you do thank every you. day, not just thank this you. week. Um, yes. I really have learned a huge amount, so thank you to, to all of you who've weighed in as well. Um, and again, you can keep posting those questions or comments you have around our marine life on our Facebook page. Wonderful discussion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.